everyone, I'm Madeline from the new Cyber Institute, and today I'll be talking about commands that can be run in the terminal on a Windows operating system that are useful to everyone. Some commands will help you stay secure, but others are just good to know for day-to-day -day activities. If you don't know what terminal is, it essentially processes commands to a computer program in the form of lines of text. So, rather than clicking and using your mouse, you type commands in. So, pictured here is the icon. The best way to access Terminal will vary depending on the version of your computer, but it can typically be found through the Start menu or Start screen where it might be in the Shortcuts or the Apps folder. Let's get into some basic commands. First up, the CD command will allow you to navigate through all of the folders and files you have on a computer. And also just a quick note up front, but terminal is not case sensitive, so typing lowercase cd versus uppercase cd will not make a difference. And so here on the screen I have an example of something that you could do with the cd command. So the backslashes separate the folders from the subfolders and the subfolders from the files. And if you do cd dot dot, this is going to bring you up one level. Essentially, this means it's going to bring you to a less specific area. So say if you navigated into the wrong folder, you can go back and find another folder to enter. The dir command is essentially the same as the ls command, because when you type in dir and then press enter, the list of the files and folders contained in the directory that you're in will then be displayed, together with some details about each of the file, like the size and the date and the time when they were last modified. Next, we have the mkdir command. This allows you to make a new directory. So to use it, you just type in mkdir and then the name of whatever folder or directory you would like to make. You can make a directory and a subdirectory at the same time by just adding backslashes in between. So the first thing would be the directory and then a backslash followed by the name of the subdirectory that you'd like to create. Ren is the command to rename. So to use it, you just type ren followed by the current name of the file or folder, then a space and then the new name. Next is task kill. So first, you can view a list of all the running tasks on your computer by using the task list command. Then you can kill them with the name or ID using the task kill command. So let's look at a brief example. Maybe you have multiple Firefox.exe processes running, and so you can use task kills backslash im firefox.exe, which will kill all of the instances of that Firefox process. And when you specify the ID, only one specific instance of Firefox will be terminated, but the backslash IM will again terminate all instances. So the hostname command will display the hostname of your machine. A hostname helps identify the device in various forms of electronic communication, such as on the World Wide Web. This could be helpful when troubleshooting issues with your computer, especially if your computer is part of a larger network. The get Mac command will show the MAC address of your network interfaces. So MAC stands for Media Access Control. So while it's often known what an IP address is, an IP address is associated with TCP slash IP, which I'll explain later, and MAC addresses are linked to the hardware of network adapters. MAC addresses are given to a network adapter when they're manufactured, and so they're sometimes called networking hardware addresses. But again, this command could be helpful because it allows you to get information that could be used in troubleshooting. FC stands for file compare, and this command does exactly what it sounds like it would do. The FC command performs either an ASCII or binary file comparison, and it will list out all the differences that it finds. So on the screen are two example commands, the first that compares two ASCII files, and the second that will do a binary compare on two images. The shutdown command allows you to shut down your computer, but it also allows you to control the behavior of the shutdown. It's commonly used as a scheduled task or is used after patches have been applied to a computer system. So typing shutdown backslash I from the terminal will initiate shutdown, but it'll also open up a GUI to give the users a bunch of options, again, regarding how the computer will shut down, whether it'll just restart, etc. There are so many different parameters that you can use to, again, specify how you want the computer to behave, but if you want to see a list of all of them, you can just type shut down, and that'll let you see them all, and then you can choose from there. The system info command is great because it helps you learn all about your system. If you need to know what brand of network card you have, processor details, or the exact version of your Windows OS, the system info command can help with that. 
the command pulls the most important information about your system and presents it to you in a very clean list that's super easy to read and is very helpful when troubleshooting. Okay, so these next commands will likely not be used as often, but again, they're still good to be familiar with if you're interested. First up, we have ipconfig or ipconfig slash all. This command shows a lot of information about your computer, including but not limited to the IP address, DNS address, subnet mask, current domain, and gateway for both physical and virtual network adapters. Next, there's a ping command. You can do ping www.whatever website. Uh, this is just an example, but this allows you to verify that the address actually exists and is operating. This is most often used for detecting devices on a network and for troubleshooting network problems. When you ping a device, essentially you send the device a short message, which it then sends back, which is the echo. This is helpful because a command can help show network disconnections and whether or not your computer has access to another computer. It also can tell you how long it takes for a packet of data to travel from your computer to its destination and back, which can reveal bad network connection as well. SFC stands for System File Checker. If you're ever concerned that a virus or some other malware has corrupted your computer, this command allows you to scan those files and ensure their integrity. Thanks for watching! These are all the commands that we will review today. Hopefully you'll be able to make use of many of them in the future. There are tons of other commands that we did not get to, but these are definitely some great ones to get started with. I'm Madeline from the New Cyber Institute, and I'll see you next time.